consider yourself as a medical doctor. If a patient comes to your office and complains about headaches, and you decide to use that single piece of information and prescribe a medicine, then I would not trust you very much. Because there are several potential sources for headaches, right? If you were going to do a little bit more thorough investigation, you would probably take the blood pressure, the, the temperature, the body temperature, maybe some, collect three or four or five symptoms, and then use that to triangulate, uh, to suspect the real problem. The same thing for <coughs> CDMA. If you see a bad frame error rate, you can't just assume that it's <coughs> one thing, right? You need to take other pieces of information to transmit power level, receive power level, the transmit gain adjust, the layer three messages, and combine all of that to, 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 to triangulate a potential source of the problem, and therefore a prescription to the resolution of this problem. So that's the approach that I want you to, it's not a linear thing, so one parameter doesn't necessarily link to anything directly. So let me show you a job call. Apparently this program has seen some messages that cause it to believe that a call ended with no release messages. And so that means probably this is a dropped call. Let me take that event and let me drag it over and drop it onto the map display. Let's see where it occurred. I don't know if you can make it out on your screen, but there's a little pink circle right there where the fingers are. That's where the call dropped. Let me select a pointer and go down to that spot and let's see if we can actually identify where this call dropped and what happened. Use your drive test tools to the max. The most important tool you have is your mind and the things you remember about the standard. Very good, so that's one case. Now, you've seen there the term search window mentioned several times, right? That was a search window issue. And why is, what is a search window, number one? How often we detect the active points and we search through the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Remember that there were four sets that we were trying to maintain. Mm -hmm. The active, the candidate, the neighbors, and the remaining. The neighbor list should have contained the closest PDS in the first place, right? That's right. So it is all, it's a combination issue. Search window was the main problem. That's Probably right. the neighbor list would also need updates. And the, 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 it was the neighbor list. You remember that, that when we looked at the neighbor list update, we found it. Now, and, and that's, a, that's a good comment, but what I want you to see is that the initial neighbor list we received from the PJ channel obviously is useless at this point, right? Because well, every time you hand off, there'll be a merge new neighbor list as we move from one place to another. And that's what we're looking for, the last neighbor list update message we received, right? And in that message, there was clearly the pilot 196. Mm -hmm. And that's the pilot which we asked for. But at that time when we were asking for it, it was too late because maybe there was a forward link interference, reverse link interference, or even lack of signal. We're too far away. This is related to what she asked. <clears throat> she mentioned that if the, the closer neighbors had been earlier on in the list, it would have been a little more helpful. So I'm wondering when when we are in handoff and we, and we receive, I mean, me as a mobile, receives a uh, merge neighbor list, how do they do the sorting of the two? Very good question. Uh, uh, now, the standard doesn't actually prescribe it. Uh, uh, so each vendor does it. I think the way you do it uh, is that you take one set from here, one pilot from here, from the first active, active set, uh, active, then one neighbor from here, then one neighbor here, one neighbor here, one neighbor here. So that's one way of doing it. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Because it's now the problem was that the search window wasn't long enough. So is it possible right. to make the search window dynamic such that if let's say the mobile doesn't get um, a strong pilots at all, that they increase the search window automatically so that the, the mobile can pick up you know, a neighbor list that is, that is possibly strong enough? Mm -hmm. That's a very good, um, good, good, good proposition. 
it, it reminds me a little bit the same conflict we had with the TF and T drop. Mm -hmm. When we did the TF and T drop, it was really not dynamic. It was fixed thresholds, mm -hmm. right? And when we went to the relative threshold, we basically said if you see a pilot which is so many dB stronger than the than, than the previous pilot for a period of time, go for it. And before you drop it, it's not a T-drop thing. It, if you see a pilot which is weaker than this other pilot by so long, for so, uh, to take it down. Exactly. So it's relative that way. You, it's not. It's more a relative. It's compared to the best you have, right? It's compared to the very best you have or the worst you have. So in that case, we made it a little bit dynamic. And your question is exactly the same way. And these are three different distinct cases which could have very well caused drop calls, pilot pollution, um, search window, and a receive signal. And you see that each one has a different signature. And in this case, apparently everything is doing fine. Let me ask you this question. If you have a pilot pollution situation, is the receive signal in the forward direction good? Yes. Yes. The problem is that it's not yours, <laughs> right? That <laughs> is everybody else's signal too. Is the forward link, uh, 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 is the reverse link signal good? Transmit power? Yes. Good. Is the transmit gain adjust good? Yes. Yes, everything looks fine. The problem is really not the reverse link, it is the forward link. Unfortunately, when you see it, you think you're having some good signals. The problem is that it is not yours, and you have to look at several of these signatures to understand that it is obviously a pilot pollution and then solve it accordingly. So these, and when do we have the signature for the for the uh, coverage, we saw that the forward link was very weak and the reverse link was too high. The transmit gain adjust was very high. That's a completely different signature. Both situations would have caused a, a, a drop call. When we did the search window, the power levels were perfectly fine in all directions, but the window was too narrow. Right? These had other issues, and all of these caused drop calls. I would just want you to draw your attention to these various kinds of scenarios. And in the real environment, I think that what I'm saying is that you should use multiple uh, references, maps, layer three messages, physical layers that like we talked about before, in order to really have a good sense of what's going on in your network. So if you're supporting a network, you're doing operation and maintenance, it is important not only to rely on the physical connection, the logical connection, but the layer three messages as well as physical maps as well, right? These will tend to give you a better sense of what's going on. I'd like to give you a microphone, uh, each one of you, and I want to basically get two, two things that you've picked up from this class. Get your, your reaction to what you've picked up from this class. What are you walking away with? Most of our um activities focus more on the back-end side so sometimes when they mention about certain things like channel why they behave in this way I don't really appreciate it but through this course I learned to appreciate especially the physical channel and how things work and why we need this wall code and so on and so forth um, and second thing is uh, um, I, all the more I realize why CDMA is so complex <laughs> and, um, well, but I think it, it and another thing is, uh, yeah, I like your analogy, like you, you try to correlate how things work with our daily life examples. I think it helps us to appreciate more. Yeah, I think that's very, um, that's very useful. Thanks. This is the best uh, uh, street, uh, CME training I have ever done. Well, that's great. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the, best, the best part of this, 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 this course is, is that uh, um, uh, Dr. Simon <coughs> present the, uh, uh, the CME tech, tech, so complicated uh, technology in such a single way uh, that uh, uh, make, make, make us uh, fully understand without compromising uh, uh, the quality itself. And we not only know what, what is CDMA, we also know how and, and why. So, so that, that, that's going to be very useful uh, in our work in the future. Excellent.